Something else that we get inside 3ds Max with the Substance plugin installed is a Substance menu that, among other things, gives us access to the Substance Settings dialog, a control panel from inside of which we can set up a number of the default options used by the Substance engine each and every time we load an archive into Max. For instance, we can choose whether the engine computes using the GPU or CPU engine by default, with GPU being the faster, but in some situations, less stable option, such as if we have a graphics card that has a limited amount of onboard memory, for instance. Note also that if we do make a change here, we will need to restart 3ds Max in order for that to initialize, as the warning message now tells us. Something else that we can control here is the default import resolution for a substance. Now, of course, the setting that we decide on here will probably depend quite a bit on the type of work that we typically do. So if we are developing 3D assets for mobile gaming, for example, then a default resolution of 128 may be just what we need. If, on the other hand, we work on high-end PC or console game titles, then resolutions of 1, possibly even 2K or higher, may be required. If we typically deliver high-end visualization or VFX pieces, however, then the 4 or even 8K options may be where we need to go. Do be aware, though, that in version 1 of the plugin, only the GPU engine could work with resolutions of 2K and above, and that limitation may well still apply to version 2 of the plugin, although I haven't as of yet been able to confirm or deny this fact. We also need to keep in mind that whilst higher substance resolutions can mean clearer, crisper textures, they will take longer to compute or recompile inside Max each and every time we tweak an option found on the substance node. Now, of course, this is only setting the default import resolutions for substances in Max, and the choice that we make here in no way locks us into having to use that resolution as we work through the material creation process, as we will see later on. And so the default of 512 seems to be a pretty safe starting point. The lock checkbox means that the X and Y resolutions of the substance will remain the same as we alter either one of them, although we can of course uncheck that and work with non-square resolutions if we want or need to. The memory budget slider gives us the ability to allocate more or less memory to the substance engine as our project may demand, although as long as we have the system resources available to handle it, I would recommend keeping this at the max allowed value of 2048 in order to gain as much speed as possible from the system. Something else we can do here is limit the number of CPU cores that the substance engine can make use of. Higher values, up to the full number of cores actually in our machine of course, will give us more speed, whilst lower values, so lower than the number of cores that we physically have, will give us the ability to perform other tasks with our computer whilst the substance engine is calculating. Finally, we have the renderer compatibility option that when we hit the open dialog button, pulls up a window telling us, in this instance, that the Substance plugin has detected an incompatible renderer, and so asks if we want to apply a set of pre- and post-render scripts in order to counter the problem. Now, when it says that this will replace any existing scripts, what it means, if I just open up the Render Setup dialog, is that any scripts already being pointed to in the scripts rollout will have their paths replaced with ones pointing to the new substance scripts that will be created here. And if I go ahead and hit the Apply option, you can see how that is the case. What these scripts do if I just pull up my minimized script editor is call pre- and post-render Python scripts that themselves then call another Python script entitled Substance Renderer Compatibility, which tells us that this module implements the functionality to allow the Substance plugin to work with renderers that do not work out of the box with 3ds Max's material interface. It converts all of the substance outputs to bitmaps and performs a hot swap right before rendering, meaning it is now possible to render a substance node in 3ds Max with a render engine that doesn't natively support them, should we want to go down that route.
Now, whilst the kind of workflow enhancements that we have looked at here often go unpraised and sometimes even unnoticed by end users, having the ability to quickly and easily set up a number of substance defaults based on the type of work that we regularly do is a very handy option to have in the Substance for 3ds Max plugin.